This is Plug In with Avi and Kyle, Internet's odd couple who just happen to be your best source for everything that is anything. Tech, news, product reviews, we are happy to welcome you on our maiden voyage. So without further ado, let's get into it. Yes, sir. Uh, we, are, we will be covering today some of the latest news, whether it's politics or actually foreign news, as well as some tech information and to keep you up to date and uh, some uh, product reviews as well. So without uh, staying on talking a lot, uh, here, Mr. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> well, I think that went well, Avi. I think yeah. that was a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. First thing is first, Mr. Avi, as my daughter calls him, who are we and why have we decided to do something as silly as trying to start a a visual radio podcast? Well, uh, the thing is that we have uh, great, great ideas and we want to share them with our audience. Uh, The other uh, option is uh, in Orange County, there is no actual talk radio. We have to listen to the stuff from Los Angeles as well as San Diego. So we're starting something Orange County specific, and we have the capability to engage and make our listeners uh, and have their opinion and count their opinion part of the segment. So that's the goal, and that's the focus. Okay, well, uh, a little about us. We are definitely the odd couple, as I said in the opening. Uh, I'm a 30-something Army combat veteran, uh, and Avi is a 60-something Year old, 60 year old. Can yeah, you guys 60. That? That's the new 40, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's an Israeli man with a surprising outlook on life that I think you guys will, will grow to love the harsh but soft Avi uh, that you're going <laughs> to learn about throughout these uh, our shows that we bring you. Um, and we promise to tell you the truth as we know it on every single topic and product that we discuss on this show. Yes, we are going to not only give you the information, hear from you, and get your input on what you think and what we should uh, even be covering down the road. So stay with us, stick with us, and you will be surprised. Um, And if you are listening to today's show and you want to uh, address a topic that we have talked about or uh, just give us your uh, opinion, you can tweet us at... uh, uh, plug in pod on Twitter. And again, that's at plug in pod. We'll see you after the break. Plug in with Avi and Kyle. <laughs> calm down, people. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, welcome back from the commercial break. We are going to be getting into our tech talk segment. Um, we're going to discuss how Windows 8 was so terrible, Windows didn't even decide to make a 9. They just went straight to 10. Well, uh, the problem is with Windows, they thought they want to be revolutionary. And always they try to copy everybody. That's Windows Microsoft uh, gig see what's out there, try to copy and do a horrible job of it, and spend a couple years to get it uh, in shape. So what they did, they came with Windows 8, Windows 8 and without the start button, and nobody knew how the tile works, and then they came with 8.1, uh, and they kind of modified it some 
to f that allow you to uh, to get the start button. But now the Windows 10, it's going to be mostly integrated between the mobile as well as the desktop. So I don't know if it's going to be as good as Windows 7 or we're back to the same place where we started with Windows 8. So that's why they skipped even 9. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like they're trying to do something. They're, you know, They have to go back to where they started because they... It was such a departure from the Windows everyone knew and loved. Yes, sir. And they, Windows 7, it was actually, again, they screwed up with Vista. They patched it with Windows 7, which is Windows uh, Vista covered with the name change, and they did modification on it. Windows 8, again, they go one bad and one good, but this time they realized the mess they made in Windows 8 yeah. and they taken them longer so they call it 10 instead of coming up with another 9. Actually 9 it's Windows 8.1 when they came with a yeah. kind of similar to the 7. Yeah, I went to actually um I didn't know I just knew I didn't like 8. I believe <laughs> uh Arna asked me one day to help her with her laptop and when I turned it on and it was Windows 8 I said, "Well, you're on your own." Um but I went to a local electronics store and they were so excited that about 8.1 that every screensaver on every computer was that uh, like 3D boxy, yeah. and it just said Windows 8.1 with a yeah. bunch of exclamation points. Um, you know, this is something I think Apple has done very well, which is integrate uh, their products with their software. It all kind of just works together flawlessly. Well, the biggest thing Apple is really... Uh they are from cradle to grave uh, company. They build the hardware and they build the specification to the hardware and they build the software to work with the hardware. Unlike Apple's, it's patch, uh, I mean, unlike uh, Windows, I'm sorry, it's patch of little things and everybody and his mother makes their mm -hmm. own drivers, their own. And uh, it, But the Windows 8, uh, you talk about and uh, you don't like it. You and about 80% of the population. <laughs> so don't feel bad. I don't feel bad at all. Actually, yeah. I think... Uh, I've switched. I'm a long, long ago switched to Apple. Yes. Um, and it's not that we're, you know, I'm, I'm not. I guess I am biased towards Apple, but they've made some mistakes recently as well. You know, the Final Cut uh, X debacle when it started, uh, it, that was terrible. Yeah. But I mean, they've made some strides. But it seems like Windows just has an idea, throws it out there, and then fixes it as they go along. Yes, and some that's why they alienate a lot of people and people jumping ships. And if you notice the Apple store down the street from us here, there's a Microsoft store at Apple store. <laughs> in Microsoft store, you can play bowling ball, tennis, and in the other store, you can't even get somebody to look at you. So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> oh, um, so what else do we have? And in, in there's another big announcement in tech news. Oh, the GoPro 4. Yes, yes. Oh. Oh, man, that thing looks like a, a beast. Yes, uh, they actually ramped it up to 4K at 32 uh, frames, and they had a, they have a, a screen touch on the back. Oh, uh, so yeah, already added it in. Built in, yes. Now, I've, I don't know. We can't confirm this yet. I don't think we'll have to ask our guys in the control room. But there's a. it almost looks like that screen, actually, there's a little button that Maybe it pops out and you can pop in another accessory there. I don't know, but uh, it looks awesome and it uh, it has good specs on it. Mm -hmm. Even the HD, you can go up to 120 frames and the uh, red standard up to 240 frames. Oh, man. So That's you can do a lot of slow, slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that uh, finally GoPro is listening to its customers. But I think you said it earlier that um, now that they've gone public... Yes, their their gig is you know do what it takes to keep the investors and the stockholders happy. So, <laughs> and before uh, they didn't have that. No, they were a privately held company up till a few months back. Oh, yeah. And so now that explains why it went from uh, I think originally you could get a GoPro like the plus the three plus was uh, what three ninety nine yes. for, uh, for yes. the best one. The best one with all the <laughs> attachment. Now it's gone up to four ninety nine. Four ninety nine, five hundred dollars yes. for a tiny little camera like this yeah. uh, most of the companies they first when they start oh we're sticking with it this is our company this that but in their uh, business plan there's always exit strategy the exit strategy <laughs> is to go public <laughs> and then just start mass producing everything and not listen to the public anymore <laughs> so do you think that uh, the quality of the gopro product is going to Decline? No, I don't think so, but there's com uh, competition is coming ev from every corner of the world, and they will have a hard way to climb. There's smaller devices with uh, even 
uh, for uh, enthusiasts and broadcasters that actually have a, a BNC connectors, so you can have a better connection than with HDMI. You mm -hmm. can hook it up to about three, four hundred feet of cables without any degradation of the signal. So wow, for the same price too. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see what's what's going on in, yeah. in GoPro's future as well as Windows. I'm excited to see this Windows yeah. 10. Um, we're going to be moving on, Avi, uh, okay. and there's no real good segue to go from this <laughs> tech to uh, our next topic, which is uh, the rise of media coverage of domestic violence. Yes, uh, sir. Recently, uh, and we get, we're on this because the mayor of Bell Gardens, uh, Daniel Crespo, was shot by his wife. Yes, and evidently. Killed. Evidently, they had a domestic uh, issue between them and the kid. They have a 17-year-old kid, mm -hmm. and I guess... 19, 19. 19, and the mother probably tried to protect the kid mm -hmm. and shot him like four or five times. So. Yeah, well, according to you know the, our sources, the kid was trying to come in between the two of the husband and wife, yeah. and the mayor punched his kid in the face. Wow. <laughs> so the wife grabbed a gun, fearing, I'm sure, fearing for... You know, if he's already beating her up and now he's beating up the kid, you know, you got you got to stop him. But I mean, it, it's just getting crazy. And and I'm always kind of hoped that the media would spend more time covering this kind of stuff, uh, that it wouldn't take Ray Rice in the NFL or uh, Mayor being shot or uh, Tiger the, Woods being chased by his but wife. But this is this is one of the things too with guns. When you have a loaded gun in the home you are tend to use it. If you didn't have it in the home or was locked and you don't have access to it immediately, he would have probably got knocked with a baseball bat, went to the hospital, a couple of stitches, yeah, and came yeah. home. Yeah. But uh, when you have a gun, the bullet is final. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the final choice. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's insane. And you, we've seen it everywhere. It's not yep. just America. No. You have the Oscar Pistorius yes. story where he shot his girlfriend yep. and he was uh, found innocent of murder but then found guilty of negligent homicide or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like second degree or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't, you know, I, I think I speak for both of us when I say there's no way to advocate uh, violence against uh, a woman yes. coming from a man or anyone. Yeah. Um, but just violence in general is getting, I mean, the world is becoming a much more violent place. Oh, stressed out. The people are way stressed out, and then they have the weapons of choice sitting at home loaded and mm -hmm. you trigger it in uh, the heat of the moment but then you are sorry for the rest of your life and the other person is gone and yeah. there is no return you cannot redo yeah there's no hindsight yeah, exactly. once you pull that trigger mm -hmm. that's it um and but she shot him five or six times yep. in the chest yep. so she's been practicing <laughs> um uh, well, I'll, it's unlike the cop down. I don't know if you saw the clip with the cop stopping a guy for uh, uh, driving without a seat and shot him four times in a close approxima proximity. Hit him once only. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, literally, he chased him to the gas station. The guy got out of the car, yeah. turned around to get his license, and the cop started shooting. And literally, he hit him once with four or five shots that were shot at him. So. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that's a whole... We could spend a whole show talking about yes. everything going on with law enforcement now. <laughs> um, so uh, since we're talking about domestic violence and, and you brought up the fact that, you know, the finality of that trigger pull, what is your what are you thinking about, you know, gun regulations now? I think I think we should have gun regulations. I don't think we should have all the weapons. We're not going to fight a war. People think that we need guns back in the old days. Yes, we needed them to fight the British and to fight the militia, to have a militia to fight. But today, they think they can take on the government with their helicopters and smart missiles and drones <laughs> with their rifles or guns. That's yeah. crazy. And I understand there's some people that they like to collect guns. Good God bless them. If you secure it and if you maintain it, in a secure area yeah you like to hunt it's fine a rifle but to have six thousand machine guns uh high power weapons sniper quality uh, grade uh, in the home <laughs> i don't think so well i mean you say that you can't hold off the u.s government with a couple rifles but isis is doing it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the wrong government, not our government. They are holding the corrupted government. Yeah, that's the doing of the government. Yeah, uh, yeah. ISIS did not just materialize. They came out of the the alienation of certain uh, people, uh, pushed them to the brinks, and they found uh, somebody to listen to them, organized them well, 
and they realized the corruption in the government and took advantage of it. And Yeah. I think that's something we're going to touch on in a later segment, right? Yes, sir. So we'll get into that more. Let's get back on this domestic violence issue. Yes. Now, uh, obviously, you've been around a lot longer than me. Um, <laughs> you keep running, <laughs> itching to the 60s. It's the new 40s, but please don't mention it to my niece <laughs> because that's a different story. So um, in the, I don't even know, what are they, the olden days? I don't even know what to call it, but back in the day before, you know, you had all of this media coverage of every scrutinizing everything was domestic violence still an issue or still a, a prominent issue in the press? No, I think, I think it was as big of an issue because women back then didn't have rights. So the guy yeah. can beat up his woman and the couple say, Hey, yeah. uh, go back to your husband. And <laughs> they didn't even take reports or it did anything with it. But, uh, it more now you hear it more yeah. before it was in closed door. The guy, Mm -hmm. beat the hell, the daylight out of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the woman or the kid or whatever. Nobody heard about it. But now it's in the media. Everybody and his mother have a cell phone taking photos or typing or texting and mm -hmm. what have you. So it's more so in the media, yes. Yeah. They'd rather, actually most people would rather just stand around and take a video than help. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they want to be uh, the news gatherer. They literally see a guy dying. They take a video instead of giving him a Exactly, hand. exactly. It's, <laughs> it's a sad, sad time we're living in sometimes. Um, again, terrible way to segue, but we're going to get into a quick product review before our, our next commercial break. Yes, sir. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the Aperture AL528C LED light. Okay. It's a multicolor. LED light uh, that can be on camera uh, or off camera. And and it costs you, you $209. Had, and you had experience with it. You actually... Uh, I have one here, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I have experience with this. You, you worked with it in the field? Uh, yeah, I've actually uh, used it at a few weddings. Oh, okay. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't know what people are thinking these days. You know, they, uh, they, um, they have these weddings where they pay hundreds of dollars for up lighting and professional DJ, yep. but not one light that illuminates enough for you to get a good shot of, uh -huh. their, of their wedding. Yeah, actually, I came from a wedding. They didn't even have one light with them. And some areas I can see when he was uh, on the screen, it was very dark, but they didn't have anything to, yeah. to light it up and make the lights even easier. Yeah, well, if you're paying a, a DJ, you know, $3,000 to do your lighting and your DJ, you figured you'd do, yeah, do have good. one spotlight. Yeah. But anyway, so this has solved the problem for me twice oh, already okay um and it's a it's a great uh featured light better than some of the higher end models i've ever used uh it's also uh not just a dual color well it is dual color 32 to 55 but everything in between those and is it battery operated it looks like the um room you can batteries. you can put two batteries on and operate it or oh. it comes with i call it plug and play uh -huh. you plug it in you put it on a stand it comes with everything you need all you need is a light stand and you're good to go wow um so, yeah, check it out. And how much is it? $209. Wow. I bought the small little thing, 200 and some odd dollars, and I had to return it twice because it didn't give enough light, and half of the LEDs were, were burnt. burnt, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this comes with everything great. I mean, I would not endorse a product on this show that I didn't use personally and, and thought was good, and this is definitely one of those products. And who is it? It's uh, Aperture. Name? Oh, okay. But they have a lot of other products, and we're actually, in two weeks, we're going to have the... Uh, representative for North America, Ted Sim. He's going to come in and talk to us more about their products. So All right. We'll look forward. Look forward to that. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll see you right after. <laughs> 